This is Russell with Community Financials. In this video, Amanda Hilton from TOPS and I discuss how Community Board can use TOPS 1 to track maintenance service requests and work orders. So if the board, you know, we're doing the financials, but if the board wants to use TOPS to help them with tracking work orders. You would just grant your um, board members with access to the work orders, the service requests, and the CCNR menus. Obviously, any of this information will also show for them in their community activity, any work orders or any of this tied to the property of the owner itself. It all gets shown on their activity, too. So I'm taking you directly into these menus, but just know that if you were looking at a community or at an owner or a vendor, you know, it's going to show all the same activity. It's a relational database, so um, a lot of this stuff is tied together. You can do updates to one area that's going to update it everywhere else or view uh, history and activity in one area. And it's also going to show everywhere else that it impacts. D does that make sense? All right. So you've got your activity feed. So the board members could see any of the work orders that have been issued, if they're open, if they're closed. Uh, obviously, each one of them has this little drop down. So if there was one picture or multiple or any type of different attachments, JPEGs, PDFs, it supports all that. So you could scroll through those here. You could close it, you could add a comment, you could get into the vendor or the property itself. You've got this little graphical representation of what work orders have been issued. It can be a pretty good indication of a problem within the community. Uh, if 61% are light repairs, it might be time for a you know lighting inspection. You might want to incorporate a, one of those into uh, your annual inspection cycle. Quick links to your work order codes and vendors. So if any of that isn't set up and you're trying to add a work order while you're walking through your condo community or something, it's really easy to update all that on the fly. You can assign the work orders directly from a property or if it's for an amenity, you could search for that here. You can differentiate between service requests and work orders. They look very similar. The only difference is, is that service requests don't have the ability to be assigned to a vendor. When I switch this over to work order, you'll see a vendor option pop up here. And that's just because we feel like owners submit service requests to you guys and then the management company decides or the board decides when to turn it over to a work order and actually have the HOA take care of it. Also, if you wanted maintenance or vendors to have access, limited access to this, that's always an option. Just keep an open mind as far as, you know, attorneys and other people that might need to get into TOPS 1. Doesn't just have to be board members. And you could set these to be recurring. So if you had landscape or pool service that needed to be set on a schedule, you can do that. And then anytime you select any of these codes, trying to find one that's got some good stuff, it will predefine a lot of this for you. And you can use voice to text to make updates if you've got the little microphone on your smartphone or your tablet. It does a really good job of recognizing that and putting it into text form. Who approved it? What vendor you want to issue it to? Or even a maintenance personnel? So is that going to populate our current vendor list? Yes, we will import that for you. Upload any number of attachments. I'm on a computer, so it's obviously bringing that up, but on a phone, it would bring up a camera roll or an image gallery. Schedule it. Work order ticket. So that was the process for creating a new work order. If I wanted to follow up on outstanding ones, anything open, um, obviously you do have the option here to put it in closed or past due, um, but this is by default just gonna show me all open work orders. It was in a card view to start with. I like to put it in a list when I'm showing this because my thought is that you're gonna most of the time be doing this like on a mobile device. So we'll shrink it and show kind of how it would appear if you were using a tablet. Put it in the list view. I could sort by street address or unit address if I'm in a condo community. And then when I scroll down for each one, I could close it. I could put a comment. Again, it will use voice to text here if I want. I could email it outside of TOPS. And then you can see these dates are past due, so I see them in red. Blow it back up here so I can navigate a little easier. Service request, I'm not going to take you in there just because it looks the exact same. Like I said, the only difference is, is that work orders can be assigned to vendors where a service request cannot. Um, and it will log when a service request has been turned into a work order. If I have an existing service request from an owner and I 
use the toggle to just turn that right into a work order and assign it to a vendor, it will show this work order was created from service request number blah, 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 blah. And it will show that in the owner portal too so they can actually see the activity of you turning their service request into a work order. Amanda, this has been terrific. It's been a great help. And I know a lot of this information is going to be well received by our clients and prospects to help make uh, overseeing their self-managed community easier. Perfect. Well, I'm glad I could help. Thanks a ton, Russell. Just let me know if there's anything else I can do for you.